take your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. And welcome to Owen and Town. My name's Dave. Here's what's coming up today. Luton were a cup of, a cut above the blades at Bramwell Lane at the weekend and got a fantastic 1-0 win with the Colton Morris goal. We'll be talking about that in a bit more detail this evening. Uh, we're going to discuss our player focus is actually Colton Morris tonight. So that'll be an interesting little chat. Uh, we'll have a look at Bristol City and we'll look at your, your thoughts, your three-word reviews and much, much more. Uh, with me tonight, I've got Steve. And Bataro, welcome, lads. And and just before, and just before, oh yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Hey, there you go. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, Hello there. yeah. I'm, you know, what can I say? I'm struggling already. <laughs> um, just on that fact, actually, I'd, I'd like to apologise to all our YouTube uh, subscribers and viewers because uh, last week I might have made a little bit of a faux pas with the camera, and uh, we weren't able to get the stuff up on on YouTube. But this week, I guarantee it will be there. And, uh, you know, thanks for your patience. But it was on Spotify now, so if you didn't, didn't listen, you can go back and listen to it. Uh, what about the weekend, fellas? What do you think? I thought it was lovely. I, um, I sort of hinted that we had the capabilities of doing it, but it was more out of hope than expectation. And, yeah, I thought we controlled it. I really didn't think we was under huge amounts of pressure. Absolutely delighted. Really, really great performance. If there was one thing that stood out for me was uh, I did actually listen back to the podcast last week and Steve, you actually said we could win it, which was quite impressive. So well, yeah, I think you even my, said 1-0. Was yeah, that your yeah, optimistic, Steve? That's my one moment of accuracy already gone. So from here on in, it's just going to be a free-for-all. But Taro, how impressed were you with the performance of the weekend? Oh, it's just beautiful, wasn't it? <clears throat> I mean, we've seen some good performances away from home, but I think that's got to be up there. Just, just for the simple fact that it's Sheffield United... Big team in this division, squad with a lot of talent. So yeah, look, it's more to come, I think. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll settle for it. But we've got to keep going. That's the main thing. Three points is always nice to have. Let's have a look at your three red views for uh, Sheffield United nil, Luton Town one. Ryan says vintage away day display. Uh, Lou fully deserved win. Gary a massive statement made, and Jake three vital points. Jill had a great day out. I'm sure that was fun. Uh, Stephen so very proud. And Hatter's News, Dare to Dream. I think we're all dreaming right now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Got and to. just one more, Phil, that Addy Bayo nutmeg. What do you think of those? Oh, it's brilliant, wasn't it? I mean, well, who was saying it the other day? Was it you, Steve, wasn't it? Oh, Addy Bayo don't really beat many people. <laughs> go around them, I think. And then all of a sudden, he goes straight through. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> go on, explain, go on. You, you will come to see that <laughs> some of my comments are way off the mark. So, you know, don't be taken <laughs> by surprise by that. But oh, it was a classic. Uh, that was about a minute late when it after it's something you said. Yeah, but it's like commentator's eye. It's forcing yeah, yeah, the change. It. But no, I mean, it, it was brilliant. But... I don't know if you saw maybe one or two moments before that, again, because we waxed lyrical about uh, Campbell, mm. or the way he held off the guy for the Swansea goal. Similar thing. He had two people on him. Yes, yeah. And then he held them off, laid it back, and then it was through to Adebayo. Brilliant. <coughs> Love the way That's he... That's a good goal, yeah. Because a lot of the time you can hit those little touches far too far, and he just got it absolutely perfect and then delivered to Colton, even though we didn't have a shot on target the whole game. <laughs> Just checking, Steve, that, that Stephen, uh, so very proud, wasn't your one again? Was no, it? no, that okay. wasn't. Because that two weeks running would be too much. It w- would be greedy. Yeah. Let's have a look at the uh, the, the, uh, the game itself then. Uh, we had two changes from Swansea, Fred and Pelly replacing Clark and Doughty, who were injured, unfortunately, but it didn't really seem to affect our performance. I think we started quite well. We had a lot of the ball and we had sort of a game plan to play, didn't we, Bataro? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the whole, the whole point of the first half, well, but what it seemed to us was just don't let Sheffield United play football. And I think we were doubling up on every single midfielder they had. Winning the second balls, I think, well, not just the first half, but over, overall the whole game, I think we were much the better team. Without, okay, it wasn't many chances created, but I'd say 
we had more than Sheffield United had to offer. So that's what I, that's what I'm really really happy about. It felt a little bit more comfortable than some other games that we've been to. Uh, would you would you think? Um, Sheffield United would have been very disappointed with their performance, but would you put that down to us or would you put that down to them being poor? I would more put it down to us, to be honest with you. I mean, when I saw that Doughty and Clark were both um, out of the side, you know, I thought, well, it's going to make it even harder. But again, you know, Edwards has said about everyone being ready to step up, whether it's one minute, whether it's the every minute or whatever. And, you know, it just it just seemed like a seamless uh, transition. So, you know, <laughs> I know that they've been a little bit wobbly. Sheffield United, uh, the you know the podcast guys said that you know they they weren't a hundred percent convinced. They were being too negative and stuff like that. But I think a lot of it was down to us. Um, their, their manager uh, in his uh, conference uh, talked about he was going on about Luton's press, their physicality. You know, he you could see that he was concerned about it. You know, whereas, you know, Edwards was, well, this is what we're going to do, not, not worrying about the opposition. So I think that we, we just got it absolutely right. We didn't give him a chance. And really, I was talking to someone and I likened him a little bit to Jack Charlton's Republic of Ireland. There was a lot of huff and puff and sort of lobbing it in there. But we really, there was one close range shot yep. that Horvath made fairly late on. Apart from that... Oh, the massive scramble, right? Yeah, yeah. apart yeah, from yeah, that, yeah. really didn't trouble him. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, we get to that point in a moment. I was just thinking, though, you talked about the manager there, and he didn't give us any credit post-match either, did he? It was all about how poor they were and, and stuff like that. So I didn't see it personally. Did he not give us any praise at all? No? None at all. Oh, well. None at all. No, but wow, they, they seldom surprised. do. They seldom do. Yeah. It is very rare that we get the recognition. and I think and, uh, the company this season, really, isn't it? It's yeah. given us any recognition, yeah. Yeah. So the first half, really, it was a it it was comfortable for Luton Town, but uh, there was not much to shout about I mean, apart from how well not just one player, every single player was playing. It was re- it was really patient. Um, the the passing and moving that you know there was we've got to get it forwards. If if the forward pass wasn't on, it would go sideways. It would go back. You know, and you just they went again. And yeah, it was comfortable. I think there was a stat, was it 30, 35 minutes in, we had um, sort of 54, 55% of the ball. That's not really Luton's way, but it just shows you how comfortable it was for us. But neither side really created a lot in that first half. We didn't We didn't feel... Sorry, but sorry, go on. I was about, just about to add to obviously what we're saying about Luton, obviously going forward, obviously pressing out the pitch and whatever else. I felt like every time we had, we had the ball in possession, there was acres of space mm. to move especially down the wide uh, down the wings and I also felt like every time Sheffield United got the ball we were onto him it was like a pack of wolves wasn't it, it was like mm. hounding him keep going keep going keep going and it was like that from minute one to 90 and it was just it was beautiful to watch really yeah brilliant perfect away performance but as always when you're in that position and you're watching the town play and you can see that we're we sort of I felt we was on top actually to be fair you're thinking but if we don't score we could throw this away and or they might get that last minute winner or whatever else. So um, how fantastic was it at the beginning of the second half where eight minutes in, you see the run that Steve's already sort of started to describe and uh, that little patient build-up ball to Adi Bayo and, and the nutmeg was sublime. But the, the, the way that Colton Morris ran to the right position... And the ball from uh, Eddie Bayo was just perfect, wasn't it? Yeah, a, l- a lot of the time, um, strikers don't hit the near post. They don't attack the near post. It's more difficult. I mean, he was actually sort of outside the near post. He, you know, he managed to get an angle on the shot. And yeah, it was just brilliant. It, it was almost like a bit of telepathy between the two of them. And you could see how chuff both of them were for each other you know we we discussed last time about one of them setting up the other one and it was often Morris and that and the roles were reversed so I think I think Adebayo will take a lot of confidence out of that as well definitely definitely yeah I mean <clears throat> I think I was, I was more admiring what Adebayo had done obviously when he megged the player but when the ball went in the back and now I thought he hit the side netting I wasn't even celebrating at first <laughs> but everyone was a bit like oh yeah, that's a great goal for about two seconds I'm sitting there going it's not even gone in is it is it the side netting I thought he had the board and then come back out but no yeah, but didn't. Y- you were sober so you weren't yeah, yeah, you weren't seeing things clearly true. and also you had to get between the goalkeeper and the defender at the time and get there first so a brilliant run a good knock in and, and, and nothing more than we deserved agreed and then from that moment on you'd have expected Sheffield United to change their, their game play or, or at least bring somebody on but well, like you say about changing their game, but obviously, like you said, 
last week, the Sheffield United fan we spoke to, and <laughs> basically, what did he say? When they go a goal down, mm. they, they don't know how to change it in heck and bottom hasn't got a plan B. So, yeah. and so I think as soon as we had scored that goal, we went, let's see if he's right now. Yeah. Well, they, they, bought, they bought Sharp on, and I think we all went, oh, well, there's one goal, because, you know, he can yeah. take a chance when it comes, but... I don't really think that he had uh, too much. Again, uh, defence and midfield just done a just an awesome gonna, yeah, job. Yeah, I think I think the only strike Billy Sharp had in the second half that strike on the back of Lockyer's head, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, terrible. Yeah. How was he not being sent off for that? Come on. <laughs> well, on the day, on. on the day, did we see it clearly? That's my first thought. The referee was in a great position for that for that decision, but I don't remember on the day no. seeing it. No. No, I, I think because the, the, the ball was sort of going forwards at a, a, a fair pace, but no, I didn't see it. Um, so, you know, one sure of those things. But that, that, would, that would have been 100 if, if VAR was involved, that would have been 100% red, right? Yeah. yeah he's decked yeah. him, isn't he? He's, he's almost like he's took a swing at him. I think, well, I think he did take a swing at him, didn't he? Yeah. It's almost like a get off me kind of thing, but he's caught him in the back of the head, and whether it's a snap, a punch or whatever, you can't be doing that. And with the referee staring right, right yeah. at it. Well, they they always do seem to be uh, right at it, you know. Same as the uh, penalty that Clark didn't get was it mm-hmm. Millwall when he, you know he got his foot kicked off. R- the ref was four or five yards away, looking right at it. So I I don't really know what they're doing to be honest with you. We're not really surprised anymore, though, are we? Let's face it, we no. don't ever get a decision. No. I think there's been probably about four or five incidents in the last three games, three four games, and you think yeah. to yourself, right, you're not going to get any of those. What's the point? Three goals in four matches for Carlton Morris. He's uh. He's doing well. We're going to discuss him in particular a little bit further on, but who, who for you in the team stood out on Saturday, Pataro? To be fair, I mean, I think all of them, I think as a collective, I think, I don't even think I can single out one of them and go, do you know what, they're really, really amazing. I'll, I'll be honest, Alan Campbell, for me, didn't have his best game in the Luton shirt, but still made a difference. If that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Bit of a silly comment, maybe, but... Well, not a silly comment, it's a comment, but not a silly one, because um, I was thinking he... It felt like he wasn't a hundred percent right. No, I mean, but he's still like say it was still still very influential all, in yeah, the game. Exactly. Yeah. In the second in the second half, especially, I think he got a few little blocks himself. He obviously he mopped up the ball, but was, he weren't at it. But I think just the position of the camber as well, defensively, he's I don't know. This guy is just he's you can tell he's he's played at a high level. Can't the camber's yeah, a different yeah, level. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. Steve, you were purring about the camber at the weekend. Oh. It, He's always there to receive the pass. He runs to the ball. He, he keeps it lovely and simple and straightforward. But, you know, there's hardly ever any misplaced passes. And you can all, you can see him. He's almost like hunting down where he thinks the ball's going to be going in sort of one or two passes time. You know, his he, reading of the game is absolutely brilliant. It really is. Um, players that were great, again, you, you can't really see past Lockyer. The, the bloke's course, just a, yeah. a man mountain. He's just phenomenal. Um, but I thought Osho was good. I've been critical of him sort of in the past. I thought he was really good. And, you know, as, as a team, just, you know, you can see him working as a unit. That You know, there's no individuals. You can see him working as a unit, and that's great. It was a decent performance. Morris went off around about the 76th minute and uh, on come Woodrow. He had a glorious chance towards the end of the game. It was it was a tough chance though, wasn't it? I mean, if you see the replay back, he's, he's got a bit of an angle to work with, but well, he, did he well maybe to- could have str- struck it towards like, on target. So that's the only one criticism I'll have of that shot. But when he went through and goal, you thought, Hit the target could go, could go anywhere. Do you know he, what I mean? He, he done well to create it because yes. it was it was he, his head on, wasn't it? So you know he done well to create it. I, th- I think he just um, snatched at it a little mm. bit because he's probably one of the more better technical players that we've got when mm. it comes to striking a ball. The, the Norwich uh, goal uh, springs to mind. You know he can hit a ball cleanly. I just think he snatched it. I think he would have been disappointed with that. Maybe trying to go too much in the corner, wouldn't he? rather yeah. than just get on target. Yeah. Yeah. He created this, the, the chance himself with the header over the, the yeah. defender as well. It's disappointing, but you know what? Didn't mean anything. Um, some people have been very critical of our goalkeeper recently. Um, and I, I think, Steve, you'll be the first to admit sometimes you are. Mm-hmm. Um, but how crucial was his save at the end of that game? That was a really good save. I mean, you know, again, he just made himself as big as possible. The, you know, the striker didn't have a lot of um, room to play with. It was quite sort of um, close in there. But no, um, it was going to go past him. He got his hand out, a good strong hand, and then it was cleared by uh, one, of, one of the defenders. So, no, absolutely essential and credit where it's due. 
what's next for us? More points. Three more, more points. Three yeah, more, more points. points. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, uh, our manager has got this team firing on all cylinders, and he's a big togetherness at the club. So, Bataro, we was at the uh, meet the manager evening the other night. Were you impressed with what he had to say to us about the team? And well, of course. we're no longer little Luton anymore. Well, I mean, I think he knows it. I mean, he's coming straight away. He knows what he's working with. Like he said, he knows the quality of player. He's not silly. That, you know, a lot of people, I think, still look at us. Well, I'm not say our teams in the league and managers <laughs> look at us anymore and go, oh, you know, we should be beating. I think there is a bit more respect there. But I think Rob Edwards knew straight away. He's seen these players. Obviously, like he said, he'd watched a few of them before. He knew a couple. <laughs> and he said that technically they were very good and he's... Not surprised at the level they're playing at, and it was, it was no surprise to him and his coaching staff when they first came in, which is nice to hear. But no, look, Rob Edwards, he he speaks very very well. Um, you can't we can't fault him. Let's face it, because it's a results game as well. He's done absolutely well. It is fantastic, super superb. Everything you can like name, everything has been wonderful, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm liking what. Um Edwards is doing with uh, like the rotating of, of the squad. Um, you know, Elijah is clearly the fittest that he's been since he's been with us. You know, last season he was flogged to death. So as a result of that, he was breaking down nearly every game, limping off, ankle getting done. You know, whether he's having a good game or not, every single game this season, he's working so hard. You know, so, you know, I think they're doing a really good um job there I don't know if it's the same medical staff or if there's new medical staff but you know things seem to have improved <laughs> off the pitch in that regard yeah and uh, I feel, and I'm sorry though I, no, sorry, to, I, feel like, I feel like the players can probably relate to him a bit more as well obviously he's similar well not similar ages but a little bit older but you know he's you can you can tell he's in there and he's obviously he's a bit of a joker you can you know, like to have a little crack and a joke he says that doesn't he he said it the other day I think he turned around and said uh, when it comes to the players you can't you have to sort of like be, yeah. on the, be on their level. Yeah, it's sort of like, <laughs> just get on with them. Because you get some managers, they're very regimented. You, you don't talk to me, you shut up, you do this, you do that. You've seen it in the past. But he doesn't seem like one of those managers. He seems like just a normal bloke. Mm. And a very good looking one of that as well. Anyway, let's <laughs> face it, he's a, he's a good looking bloke, isn't he? <laughs> no, do you know what it is? Because it makes me really, really jealous. And I look, I thought I was, I thought I was half decent looking until I saw him. I was like, jeez, no. maybe I'm not. No. <laughs> he's just a normal man. That's a joke, bro. Um, uh, Mike Simmons uh, put up a, a, a good fact. L- Luton do love a 1-0 win on the road. Uh, since returning to the Championship, 17 of our 34 away wins have come by a single goal victory, which is an amazing stat, but I'll take that every week, wouldn't you? My heart wouldn't, no. Huh. No, I'd, I'd certainly like a few more goals, to be honest with you. Player focus tonight. Um, and before we go to player focus, actually, we, we've got a fixture coming up. Um, if you're listening to this today, it would be Bristol City. Yes. Now, there's a game that we're looking forward to, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's one that we don't just automatically think, oh, there's three points, because, you know, it, it isn't. We're going to have to do everything right. We've got to work hard. Um, I mean, I've had, had a look at Bristol City's last six games. The, 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 there's not a lot of goals going on. Um, beat Blackpool 2-0, nil nil with Huddersfield, lost 2-0 to Cardiff, beat Hull City 1-0, drew one all with Sunderland, drew one all with Wigan. So... They're not um, conceding a lot of goals, but also they're not scoring a lot of goals. If we are on our game, potentially, maybe this is the game where it all clicks and we see that sort of three, four, whatever. But are you looking forward to the return of our two former players? Well, I believe Naismith's injured for it. That's a shame. That's convenient. Uh, Yeah. Um, I think he's been out for a little while. I'm not too sure. But no, I am. Obviously, I'll be happy to see Cornick. Big Although fan, he's finding Cornick's, or the fans at Bristol City are not been overly complimentary about Cornick's contributions so yeah, far. Yeah, but what do they expect? I mean, to be fair, he's not played many minutes. I think he's made, I don't think he's started the game, is he? No, I mean, he had his best season last season for us. Mm-hmm. And that was as a result of having a long run of games. He got the confidence, yeah. the fitness, the sharpness, and he, and he was getting the goals. Um, when he's one of these players, he can't dip in and out of the side, and that was invariably what he was going to be doing with us. Um, of course, Bristol City fans thought that they'd taken our best striker yeah. when, when he joined them. That's fine. That's up, that's up to them. But he's not going to do anything. Just you know, the odd few minutes here and there. We are, I think, twelve points in front of them. Do oh. we? Do we expect to like put them to bed? Bataro. I mean, I know it's it's an easy an easy question to answer, isn't it? But or to ask. But 
uh, with no disrespect to Bristol City, are we looking for our, our, our best home performance this time? Uh, well, I uh, don't know about best performance. You can never tell, can you, really? But uh, I just want to see us play well again and just get the result. Just get the result, however. Because Re- realistically, if we play well, we should get the result. That's the way. Because we've, uh, for me, we've got far better players being respectful now as well. Mm. I think we've got a, a much better squad. And I'm not saying they've got bad players or anything like that. I just think the way we're drilled, the quality we've got, we've got players that can play in certain positions. And they, Bristol City really, the last couple of seasons, they supposedly meant to be going for promotion as well. They've not really done anything. Well, they keep going for these champagne yeah, yeah, signings, I mean. but they're not sort of moulding them into a team at all. And they're not, yeah, I mean, they've got a lot of youngsters in there. There's a couple of good players in there. Don't get it wrong from their youth academy. They, when I watch them... They're a strange side because one minute they look really, really poor and the next they look like they can play some football but they don't always get, like I say, they don't get many goals and whatever else. But no, look, I mean, putting them to bed, I'm not too sure about that but I think we can definitely win the game. So you're saying be cautious but yeah. be yeah, good. Yeah, I, I mean, we need to, especially on the counter. They've got a couple of good players on the counter attack as well. That Vyman, you need to be careful of him. When he picks a pocket of space, he always finds himself in and around assisting or scoring. Mm-hmm. So... But we have it in us to, to get the result. And, and that result will put us in a good frame of mind for the weekend. And, and hopefully, you know, is it is it we can still dream about automatic? Could we actually make automatic? It's more likely than it was before Saturday. Yeah. But, you, you know, there's still so much going on. You know, um, you, you would expect Sheffield United to up the ante slightly mm-hmm. Middlesbrough is still going well um, something that I thought that was absolutely spot on from Horvath his interview after the game he said today doesn't mean anything if we don't back it up on yes. Wednesday he said we have to back it up because that's what it, that's what it takes at this time of the season but are the players believe they can get there don't they well, surely I think obviously Rob Edwards is in, like, he's putting it into them as well he's saying look we can, I think he knows and he's giving them the confidence to keep going and progressing and whatever else Whereas maybe people in the past, over recent years, have maybe gone, do you know what? You know, be a bit wary, this team can do this, can do that. I think Robert was, do you know what? I think he's got that mentality, that approach of, do you know what, lads? Go and play your football. You are good enough. Go go out and toe to toe. And I think that's what we're seeing now. That's see, why we're getting more results. See, that they won't think that they're out of the playoffs at all. You know, I mean, I know there's an awful lot of teams in that small area, but, you know, they will fancy it. I mean, um, played 36, they're on 48 points. So, you know, they've got some work to do, but, you know, it's not a dead rubber. They've still got things to mm-hmm. play for. This is it, yeah. And then if they come to our place and try and push it, then, then there'll be a bit more space for our, our attackers to go. Let's, yeah. hope, let's hope we can get three points at home on, on, on Wednesday oh, and, yeah. and, and make sure that, that when we go to Sunderland, it, it really is a crucial game. Um, yeah. um, we'll try and we're trying to talk about Sunderland another time. But yeah. yeah Dave, like you said a second ago, sorry, um, you obviously said, oh, is it too... You know, is it too? Uh, what did you say about dreaming for second place? Clearly, but is is it over ambitious to think we can well, get to second? What I was about to say to that, obviously, is with four games to go, if we were only five points off, then it's doable. I think any more than sort of like I think more than five points, I think maybe not. But I think let's get the next six games out of the way, and we'll see where we are for the it, last four. It's always a it's always a good ride when you're uh, supporting the Luton Town, isn't it? <laughs> it's the same. Uh, I'll play a I'll play a performance tonight. I'll play uh, I'll play play a focus <laughs> performance focus. <laughs> Uh, I'm just reading what uh, producer Jacob written in his performance focus. Um, is Colton Morris the most complete striker we've had in recent years? And can he reach the 20 goal mark? What you yes. Thinking? Yes and yes. Is that it? Well, yes I and mean, yes. What else do we say? I mean, you asked the question. I'm just giving you a simple response, Dave. But um, Okay, so hurt. let me ask it a different way then. then. Why do you think that Colton Morris is the most complete striker that we've ever had? One, because I'm fairly young still. No offence, not as old as you two boys, but... Um, Thank you. That's all right. You're still quite young and good-looking yourself, sir. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I need to stop complimenting my blokes now. It's looking a bit weird, isn't it? But, um, anyway. <laughs> but, no, look, I mean, the last person I, I recall being a fairly complete centre-forward was Steve Howard, realistically. And, I mean, I was young back then. Maybe my view was a bit, you know, a bit different to what people might have thought, but... Howard was um, exceptional for us. Yeah, he, he was, was great. Well, I um, remember big, big target man, but he was also he can also do a bit more as well. But for me, Morris is more athletic, more agile than recent strikers that we've had for the size of him. And I'm 
20 goals off. He's got us at four. Is it four now to get 20? No, he's on 15. 15. Oh, he's on yeah. 15. Oh, yeah. Five. So five in. Is it 10 games left, is it? Mm. Yeah. So five and 10. Why not? I'm sure he can get two in well, one actually, game. So, yeah. 10 means we get automatic promotion. 13 means we win the playoff final. Whichever. Mm. Yeah. I don't mind. Um, what, but Steve, what, what, what really sticks out for you for Morris's performances? He's genuinely a two footed player. Okay. Um, he scored goals with both feet and he, he hits the ball crisply. He can go either way when he uh, does his step overs and then goes past the man. He goes both ways. So you, with, with that attribute, you don't know which, what he's going to do yeah, to you so as a defender. He does that. Um, headers, he's, he's got goals at the near post. He's got goals at the far post. Uh, headers are down into the ground. And long shots, uh, poachers goal like Saturday. You know, he's got the whole array of goals already for us this season. And he's contributed, you know, really delicate chips over Adebayo, passes through. So just the, the fact that he contributes in so many different ways, I, th- I think that's what makes so, him yeah, superb so, so for us. Obviously, he's how both feet he is, obviously, which is he's great on both feet. How good is his crossing his left foot? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's always, he always goes on his left. It's almost like he knows that one foot's good for something and the other foot's good for another foot. Does that make sense? Maybe he knows as a target man exactly mm-hmm. where he would yeah. want the cross. I remember McArthur could always cross the ball because he knew damn well where he would want it, and maybe Morris is coming from that same that same area. It's very relevant, but you can see why uh, we paid the so-called two million or whatever it's supposed to be for him. You yeah, can see a lot. Of, I mean, well, I know I said at the beginning of the season, I thought, I thought it's a lot of money if it's true, but it's not a lot of money con- compared to what he actually, how good he really is. Given his form and given the, the amount of goals he scored, it, he's bound to attract some interest from other clubs. Um, Clearly, if we're having a great season and we end up in the playoffs or, you know, please God, always, um, he'll stay, right? Oh, or will yeah. it be hard to keep him? No, no I, I don't think it, it will be. I mean, obviously money talks at the end of the day and th- this is where we, we are sort of not lagging behind, but we just can't, can't compete with some of them. Um, the grass isn't always greener, you know, Naismith, other players gone on to so-called bigger and better things, and it hasn't worked out. They've earned a lot more money. Fine, if if that's what you know you're looking for. But w- with regards to the career, it's going to be difficult for him to go to somewhere that's going to further enhance his career. How we've enhanced it, you know, he's the one that's put the work in, and that you know, he's the one with the intelligence. But again, brilliantly recruited, and now he's being brilliantly coached. And we're getting the most out of him. And, you know, he will see that. He can't be unhappy. He must be loving his football here. So it'd have to be something special to move. Well, we asked you guys, um, is Cotton Morris the most complete strike we've had in recent years? And can he reach the 20-goal mark for the season? Ad said he has everything. Pace, strength, can hold up the ball, can dribble, can head. Both footed, uses skill to beat players and has a knack for being in the right place at the right time. It's criminal that he's overlooked when people talk about the best strikers in the league. Yeah, that's one thing I was about to say, actually, just before. Obviously, I did get my chance to say it. I was about to put to, obviously, you gents, how many strikers in the league can you think that are better than him? That's the question I'd ask how good he really is. Because I can't think of many, to be fair, if not any. I know it's a, it's a bias, but... Well, there's a strong bias, but I can't yeah, of think course. of any either. But yeah. he's, he's got to be up there. With a bit. I mean, he's up there in the scoring charts and assists and whatever else. So he has to be top three, surely, in the league. And probably one of the most fouled as well, along with Adam yeah. Bayer. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. He's taken some horrible ones recently, isn't he? Uh, Richard says he's as good as they get at this level, scores all types of goals, has the ability to win a game on his own, scores in big games. He should get to 20 if he stays fit. If we had him last season, we'd have probably gone up. I think if we'd have had anyone <coughs> available towards the end of last season, we'd have gone up. I mean, you know, I don't want to go over it too much, but again, you know, like the two ties against Huddersfield, we were the better team. Yeah. You know, yeah. Cornick had one at, uh, at the second league at Huddersfield. Cornick had a good opportunity to put us 1-0 up. We were the better team. And, uh, you know, we, we just run out of players. We just run out of players. If, if, we'd, yeah, if we had this squad now at that stage, we'd have gone yeah. up. Uh, Chris says, yes, he has it all. And it brings others into play too. Great to see the partnership with Elijah developing in recent times. Mm. And uh, will he get the 20 goals? Yeah, he reckons with the playoffs included, he will. Um 
Dave says, yes and yes, I've disagreed with stuff Andy Burgess has said in the past, but the range of goals Morris can score is incredible. With no disrespect to Andy Bayo and Collins before him, Morris can do the poaching, but can also put one in from 20 yards too. And Matt says, he literally has everything. First touch, work rate, finishing, vision. Yes. It's two million well spent. If It's two million well spent. Yeah. Oh, mate, I mean, massively. I mean, if we spent three, three and a half million pounds, we would still be sitting there going, oh, yeah, great, great signing. But like you say, vision, everything. I mean, if you used to put this guy on the left wing or, or as a number 10 or the right wing, he'd probably still do a job, you know. That's I, how good he really is. I, I do find it strange, though, because, you know, we, we've got these fantastic players and they're moulded into a really, really good team. But when it comes to the value of our players, it just seems that other Clubs and that don't sort of see them as the big no. values. I think mean, I think someone here, uh, Bristol Semenyo, was worth ten million. Well, you know, I'm I'm sorry, but I'd be picking Morris every time. Is um, that is that due to contract and whatever else? Well, I? yeah, m- maybe. You know, I don't know what the reason is, but I, th- I think some of our players are undervalued by people outside oh, of Luton. Huge, maybe yeah. because it's a, a team's like Luton scenario. Yeah, no, we we need to be in the little club scenario. And that will happen when we get to power court because the, the, the stadium will be bigger, there'll be more people watching and suddenly it won't be Little Luton anymore. Mm-hmm. However, having said that, um, you can't be more delighted than we've been in the last few seasons as a Luton, Luton fans. We, we, we are getting the acknowledgement and you know people are starting to take note you know, and you see the odd comment, well, wish our club was being run like Luton as such and such. I, I have no problems with how the club's been run. Other fans... Keep underestimating us. That'd be fine. Yeah, of course. But like you say, obviously, about the progress we've made in recent season. I thought I saw a thing um, on Twitter earlier. I don't know who put it up, so I can't recall that. But it was basically like a graph. I see him every. Yeah. Se- I see him. Yeah. Every, I see him every couple of weeks now. And they're always looting graphs, and they're not always they're not always looting fans putting these up as well. This is like EFL podcasts or whatever else. Yeah. And they're saying like Luton's like rise that uh, from league yeah, to conference the, or whatever. The, it's, the it's, uh, it's league positions over yeah. the last ten ten it's seasons. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's the progress is. Well, and like I say, over 10 seasons, it's ridiculous. That yeah. is scary stuff. I mean, if we can, well, if you can keep improving like that, it's got to be Premier League. <laughs> then we'll beat Man City yeah, to the Champions League. Yeah, it's got to yeah. get Premier League top four soon, really, in the next five seasons. Going forward, uh, it's lovely to see that Jordan Clark has re-signed and taken that extra time with us. Um, and the Millwall game on Good Friday has moved to 12.30. That means we just got to go to the pub earlier. But the next five games are qu- will probably define our season. Right. Um, Bristol City, let's hope we can get three points. But there is one coming. Mm-hmm. And they're a little bit scared right now, aren't they? They are. But, you know, <laughs> you know, we, we know what happened at, at their place. And um, they were a little bit worried at that time as well. Would you take losing to them again, but... Make it the playoffs. Yeah, of course. You've got to be realistic, <coughs> surely, don't you? Steve, what are you thinking? <sighs> if you'll guarantee playoffs... Oh, uh, actually, to be fair... No, no, no. I know what, he's think- I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, we get all mates. That's what you're thinking, aren't you? <laughs> That's what it is. I can't handle losing to them, okay? It's, yeah, it, it, it sucks. It really does suck. And that, and that 4-0 um, defeat, you know, that, that was awful. I, th- I think it might have coincided with um, previous managers starting talks as... Um, Southampton, I don't know. Um, but I would want to, to accept a defeat to them. I want it to be winning the playoffs. Okay, I'll give you that. Thank you. Um, at the meet the manager's evening, Rob Edwards knows what that means to us. Mm. But don't you think it means a little bit more to him as well? Not not more, but he's, he, yeah, he's, there's, there's a real, um, not, not grievance, but that he really wants to do it. But oh, it, 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 it can't mean more than what it does to us. No, of course. Well, I get that, but you I think he is slightly bitter about Watford, though. I think he is slight. I think there's something about him. He didn't want to say too much, but I think there's something deep down inside of him. There's like a seed well, because of him planting. Again, like, at that, that meet the managers evening, of course. Um, that was the night they got rid of Billich. Yes, and there was a uh, there was a joke flying around, weren't there? Obviously, people were putting it to him. He didn't like I say he didn't try to say too much. But at one point, he did. Um, he was very he, diplomatic. He was very uh, yeah yeah. He had, a slight giggle at something to do with them. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. We ask this every week, next five games. How many points are we going to get? Oh, God, right, we well, give us the five games. Bristol, Sunderland, Watford. 
If you look at your running list, it's on there, Steve. I'm not looking at that. I'm writing them down. <laughs> Mill, 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 Mill and Blackpool. <coughs> right. Sorry, Dave, Nick, pen a second. Okay, so... Would we be happy with um, nine? Um, well, I've got 11. 11's fine? Yeah, greedy, I'm afraid. Uh, I've currently got... Yeah. Yeah, I think I've got the exactly the same as you, 11. Wow. Yeah, two, two draws and three wins. Draws at Sunderland oh, and yeah, Millwall. Ah, oh, see, I've gone for a draw at Watford. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, why do you do that? Sorry, I, no, I'm just thinking realistically, because I'm thinking they're not going to keep losing forever, are they? Well, sorry, listen. Sorry, I, have to, I have to do it. You know what's going to happen, right? We'll get a draw there, and they'll lose the rest of their games anyway, So, and then we'll still get in the playoffs. It's never easy. Let's hope that we are on that, that promotion push. Um, I look forward to seeing uh, us play Watford very, very soon. But yeah. overall, overall, we can't complain. Uh, that's all we've got time for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave some comments on YouTube if you really want to. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Lovely. Thank you.